Hi, my name is JP, and this is my Psychbusters Myths presentation. Myth number one, humans only use 10% of their brains. For our first point, I will be addressing a commonly believed myth and one that has been debated very recently. You've probably heard the idea that humans only use 10% of their brains, which has been perpetuated and emphasized a lot in the 2010s and onwards by the media. It's a claim that's been used a multi uh, multitude of times in movies, books, and just regular conversation. The myth suggests that 90% of our brains are unused, like some sort of locked treasure chest full of potential. People love this idea because it makes it seem like we're just one secret away from unlocking superhuman abilities or some sort of innate power. But is there any truth to this? Unfortunately, science has a lot to say about why this belief doesn't hold up when faced with real evidence found by genuine experts. Let's break it down and see what goes on behind this belief. To understand why this myth about using only 10% of our brains still circulates in our society, we need to define a few important psychological terms that add context. Our first term being cognitive load. This refers to the amount of mental effort being used at any point in working memory. The myth will have us believe that our brains are mostly sitting around doing nothing. But when we look at cognitive load, we can see that even mundane or just boring tasks require the coordinated effort of multiple regions of our brains. Our brains aren't just sitting around in our heads doing nothing. They're constantly working, even when we don't realize it. Our next term is attention and perception. Here's the thing. Humans are bombarded with sensory input all the time. Attention and perception involve our brain's ability to focus and interpret this constant and strong flow of information. This isn't a 10% effort sort of job, and it demands much more work and energy than more commonly believed. Our attention systems prove we're using way more brain power than the myth suggests. Our next term is neural efficiency hypothesis from the National Library of Medicine. Have you ever heard that practice makes perfect? In the brain's case, practice uh, makes processes more efficient, and the neural efficiency hypothesis explains that as we learn and repeat tasks, our brains become more adept, using fewer resources for repeated tasks. This does not refer to any sort of inefficiency as our minds are genuine masters of that. So when people think efficiency translates to not using part of our brains, it's completely incorrect in the way that they think. The 10% myth falls apart fast when you look at real research or any sort of credible reports conducted by experts in the field. Neuroimaging techniques such as MRIs and PET scans have made it possible to track brain activity in detail and be able to observe said activity with an actual physical image. Guess what we see in these scans? Virtually every region of the brain shows activity at all times, even when we think we're doing nothing and just relaxing. Studies show that our brain is constantly buzzing with electrical impulses and shooting out messages to itself, firing neurons after neurons and signals for everything from basic survival functions like breathing to complex thought and analysis. According to Lindbergh, 2011 in Science Direct, quote, the brain demonstrates overlapping widespread activity during even simple tasks, unquote, basically debunking any sort of idea that large overlapping groups in the brain are inactive altogether at any given time. The default mode network, for example, is the region of our brain that immediately starts firing and showing activity as soon as we begin to think about ourselves in any capacity. Every single part of our brain contributes to the complex processes that make us who we are, from sensing danger to solving math problems to feeling emotions. The myth simply doesn't stand after a short amount of time researching and will probably never be true. So overall, what is the bottom line for this myth? The idea that humans only use 10% of their brains is nothing more than a myth and just a complete lie busted by science. Our brains are working all the time with different regions communicating, processing, and adapting to everything we think and feel. The myth is only something that is still commonly heard because it's interesting to think about, especially if you assume it's true, like is there a sort of way we could activate our full potential and so on. It's not that we're wasting potential, it's that the human mind is already super complex and fully capable. There isn't exactly a switch waiting to be turned on that will let us ascend into a higher plane of existence. Our brains are already workhorses and will continue to be so for years and years. Myth number two. Frequent forgetfulness in older adults means they have Alzheimer's. Our next myth creates significant anxiety for a lot of older people around the world, which is the belief that frequent memory lapses automatically signal Alzheimer's disease. We've all heard some stories of an elderly family member, such as your grandparents, losing their things or struggling to recall names, which sometimes brings up questions about their health or possibly dementia. This myth, while sometimes can occur in some adults, is an oversimplification and doesn't help anybody, and makes memory loss an immediate indicator of a dying brain to some people. According to the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, the differences between normal aging and dementia are clear but often misunderstood. We will explore the reasons why not all memory loss is indicative of Alzheimer's, diving into the evidence-based distinctions that debunk this misconception. So, to separate fact from the fiction, it's important to clarify a few critical psychological and aging-related terms related to memory and cognition. Our first term being normal age-related memory changes. As people grow older, it's normal to have occasional memory slip-ups like forgetting names or misplacing items. According to the National Institute of Aging, these types of changes are not necessarily signs of Alzheimer's and typically don't affect daily life. For instance, taking a bit longer to remember details or occasionally missing an appointment is a common part of aging, in comparison to the more serious and much more persistent symptoms associated with dementia. Our next term is mild cognitive impairment, or MCI, from the National Library of Medicine. MCI involves noticeable changes in memory and thinking skills, 
but these changes aren't always private. Uh, don't always progress to dementia and many individuals with mci can still function independently and lead normal lives without consistent fear of underlying afflictions this demonstrates that a bit of memory loss is not a guaranteed path to dementia which further emphasizes how complex our brains are and how much it varies from person to person our next term is diagnostic overgeneralization. this cognitive bias involves assuming that specific symptoms such as forgetfulness automatically imply a broad diagnosis like alzheimer's this type of overgeneralization can lead to misdiagnosis and a necessary amount of fear, and essentially just a completely misinformed perspective on Alzheimer's and memory-related diseases. It's paramount that we as a society avoid this sort of behavior to ensure that we don't unnecessarily stress out older people and have fear spread over a disease that the general population usually does not suffer from. Despite the myth, not all memory loss is even closely related to Alzheimer's and is more commonly not anything serious. In fact, there are clear differences between normal aging-related memory changes and the symptoms of dementia. According to the Alzheimer's Society of Canada, normal aging often involves mild forgetfulness, such as occasionally misplacing objects or struggling to find the right word in a sentence. These lapses don't interrupt or disrupt daily life and are usually remembered later. Alzheimer's, on the other hand, manifests as severe and persistent memory problems that interfere with routine tasks and oftentimes personal relationships. For instance, forgetting the names of close family members, getting lost in places you know well, or struggling to keep up with conversations can be signs of serious cognitive decline. The National Institute on Aging emphasizes that factors such as stress, medication side effects, and sleep deprivation can contribute to memory lapses unrelated to dementia. In these cases, addressing these underlying uh, causes often improves memory. Alzheimer's is indeed diagnosed based on a combination of symptoms, mental assessments, and in some, case, uh, some cases, neuroimaging such as PET scans or MRIs. It is a long process that's not as, simply, it's not as simple as common memory loss and is much more complex. It's essential that we recognize that normal aging processes differ significantly from dementia and Alzheimer's. By clarifying these distinctions, we can reduce unwarranted fears about memory loss and provide better support and understanding to older adults experiencing normal cognitive changes. The myth that frequent forgetfulness in older adults always indicates Alzheimer's disease is busted. Forgetting things from time to time is a normal part of aging and does not automatically signal the onset of dementia. The Alzheimer's Society of Canada and the National Institute on Aging both highlight the critical differences between age-related memory lapses and the severe, persistent impairments seen in Alzheimer's disease. While fear of mental decline is understandable, it is essential to differentiate between regular aging-related memory loss and other symptoms. By doing so, we can offer a more balanced and healthy understanding of what slight memory loss is versus Alzheimer's, which is a genuine life-altering disease. So it's important to ensure that older individuals are not fear-mongered into believing they are dying because they forgot where they left their keys and such. Understanding these differences and not perpetuating this myth is what is needed to keep adults properly informed and older people from living in fear of such a debilitating and life-changing illness. Thank you.